So today, do a little, a little something different than normal. Uh, I'm playing Mario Bros. Uh, the original game, the original Mario Bros. from Arcade Archives. It just released today on the Nintendo Switch eShop, and I want to talk about it. And I want to talk about uh, Nintendo's general approach with their uh, their classic library on Switch. Because this game is utterly ridiculously expensive. It should not be as expensive as it is. Uh, this game that I just bought today, with the credit I had still available on my eShop from a fan who helped me purchase Sonic Mania, is absolutely nuts. Uh, $7.99 plus tax. It, com it comes to like eight fifty two dollars or something. It's ridiculous how expensive this game is. And that has nothing to do with how good the game is. I mean, right when you go into the launch screen, it says made in, in 1983 by Nintendo. We are 34 years later and they're charging almost $10 for this one game. Now, obviously, uh, this game has some interesting aspects to it in that, in addition to, obviously, the classic gameplay from the original Mario Bros., which, by the way, used to be packed in with games like Super Mario Bros. 3 for free. Like, it cost you nothing to have that game. It was just a given away. Um, they added some modes, like high score mode, caravan mode. They have, like, online uh, score tracking and stuff in here, which is, you know, new and different. But just because you add some high score tracking... And, and a couple modes does not suddenly make this game worth seven dollars and 99 cents especially since none of the gameplay has been revamped it's literally the original game with a couple modes and some online scoring and this brings me to a larger point where for a long time a lot of us nintendo fans a lot maybe just consumers in general have been waiting to see what nintendo's plans are for virtual console on Nintendo Switch. And with the release of this game, and as I'm going through it, um, for $7.99, it's just crazy. I, back in the day, it was cheaper to play this game at the actual arcade than it is to buy it. I, just baffles my mind. But either way, setting all that aside, when I sit here and I'm thinking about virtual console on Switch, and I'm sitting here and I realize I spent eight dollars and 52 cents on this classic arcade game that used to cost a quarter to play i my mind is kind of blown at what nintendo is deciding to do i don't think nintendo is going to have virtual console on switch i've made this known in the past i had a hot take on it but i never really discussed why and part of it is because i think virtual console for nintendo uh, was just a very complicated matter over the Wii, DS, and Wii U era. Uh, they never really completed the libraries for any of the systems on there. Uh, they keep having to reboot it, and they kept upsetting customers. And I think Nintendo's like, look, we're just not going to mess with Virtual Console in that form anymore because they just couldn't figure out a way to make it work well. Even though Xbox has their arcade thing now and PlayStation has their... And they're streaming service for playing classic games. And those you just pay monthly fees to access. And I actually, you know, when they talked about the online features of Nintendo Switch way back in January, I actually was, you know, we had a little podcast, a little reaction to it back then. And I, you know, Eric and I came up with a really cool idea about how they should have a streaming service. And this was before all the streaming services launched now, where Nintendo should have a service that you pay a monthly fee to or a yearly fee to, and you can access the entire virtual console library and they could just keep updating that library uh and i you know I, I didn't think nintendo would actually do it but i always thought it was a good idea lo and behold their competition did it but it's still something that i think nintendo should adapt and do something with but nintendo obviously isn't all about that as you see with them charging eight dollars you know eight dollars plus with tax for a game that they released on arcades that used to cost people a quarter just to try out back in 1983 it it just made me realize that nintendo just doesn't care 
about their classic library in the way that us fans do. They have decided to go a completely different route. And now I'm starting to think the NES Classic Edition, the Super Nintendo Classic Edition, and things like the Archive Archives are kind of the direction Nintendo is going to be taking their classic games moving forward. What I mean to say is Nintendo is creating a path that is extremely profitable for them, but gives consumers less options uh, now that the Switch is out on the market. I don't. I think Nintendo with the Switch, they're, they're going to have these arcade archives because they're not planning to release a classic system that has a collection of their arcade games. So they're going to have their arcade games through here. They're going to offer us, you know, quote unquote, free NES games with online features, uh, you know, through their online subscription, and that's fine. I don't think there's anything wrong with that. You know, I hate when I hate when people call things that you, you know, like games of gold. You get a free game. It's not free when you're paying for the service, right? So, I mean, I, I always hate that that twist. Like, oh, well, you know, I mean, you were paying for the service before, but now we're giving you something. It doesn't matter. Either way, you're still paying to gain access to those games. If they're free, you shouldn't need games of gold to get them. Um, you shouldn't need an Xbox Live account to get it. It should just be given to every owner of an Xbox. Same with the PlayStation Network, and same with what Nintendo's, you know, calling their NES games with their online system. Oh, we're giving you free games. No, you're not giving us free games because we have to pay to access those games. Um, but whatever. And it's all marketing spin. doesn't really matter. But it kind of saddens me to come to that realization that I don't think Nintendo's going to do a true virtual console. Now, obviously, Arcade Archives, Mario Bros., this is actually uh, similar to what, you know, you could argue virtual console used to be. You'd access a, a virtual console, you'd go through a list of games, and you buy it. It actually worked a lot like the eShops did. And, yeah, you bought this straight through the eShop. But this wasn't separated. You know, this wasn't like, there's a virtual console and here's the eShop. No, this was part of the eShop. So that's new. And on top of that, they are only giving us these arcade games right now. And, I, again, I said this before and I'll say it again. It's because they're they're not going to release a classic collection of arcade games. They don't think they would sell. I don't know why they think they can get away with a price of $8. For $8, they might as well throw this game in the trash. I don't think it's going to sell very well. I don't think it's worthwhile to them. And maybe they didn't think it was going to sell well anyways. But I'm telling you, if they had released this game for $0.99, cents, it would it'd be like the number one most purchased game on the eShop for like the next week or two. Period. Because people are willing to look back at an old arcade game that used to cost, you know, a quarter to play and just own it for a dollar. I mean, that, that feels to me what a, a fair price is for this game. But Nintendo disagrees. They think it's worth way more than it really is. And that gets to an overall issue that eShop, uh, e the, the virtual console has kind of always had, is where game prices on virtual console were always a bit pricey anyways. Uh, you jump up to a Super Nintendo or an N64 game, I mean, you're dropping 10, sometimes 20 bucks for those games, and it's like, really? I can go to my local game store right now and buy a used copy, physical copy of those games for less than that. It, it's insane what they would be charging for these digital copies and i get there's the convenience factor of having them on your platform and that's exactly why virtual console was such a revolutionary idea when nintendo started it back in the wii before anyone else was even doing anything remotely like it nintendo pioneered this concept of having uh your old library available digitally on your platform and then everyone else you know kind of ca carbon copied it and now they're doing it better and that isn't to knock on the NES Classic Edition or the Super Nintendo Classic Edition or the likely eventual N64 Classic Edition and maybe even GameCube Classic Edition someday uh, or Game Boy and Game Boy Advance or whatever they decide to do with their Classic Editions moving forward. I'm not knocking those systems. I think those plug-and-play systems are unique, they're highly collectible, and they have uses. I've owned plug-and-play platforms before. I actually have a plug-and-play uh, Dance Dance Revolution game in my house. Uh, plug and play devices and plug and play games. I, I think there's a market for them and I think those should exist, but I don't think those need to exist in lieu of virtual console, but I think Nintendo doesn't view things that way. I think they view any way that you can legally get a hold of their classic games as competition with each other. Notice how we're getting Archive Archives, but we don't have an Archive Classic Pro, even though you could arca you could argue that arcade stuff came first, so they should have released that before the NES Classic. But that's because they're not going to. And even the games that we get for free through uh, the online subscription, yeah, some of them might be games that are on the NES Classic Edition, which they are reprinting next year, or reprinting, re, you know, whatever, I guess that's what it's called, reprinting, making another run of next year. 
It's that the games they get, you know, we're going to get them in a fashion that's different um, enough. And because it's, it's free, you know, quote unquote free, Nintendo's not really going to care because they're not selling the game separately. Uh, I heard there might be an option you could purchase the game if you, if you cancel your online subscription. But then again, if they offer an option to purchase those games if you cancel your online subscription, let's be real. What are they going to charge for The Legend of Zelda? $5? $8? $10? Because it's a it's a vastly superior game than the original Mario Bros. you see me playing right now. And probably playing pretty poorly. I haven't played this game since I was like a really little kid when they brought it over to NES. I, I never actually played it in the arcades. But yeah, it it's a very confusing situation. Uh, and I, I don't... It's almost baffling because I feel like even if they just brought Virtual Console back the way they have in the past, which it was a hot mess, they would make money because they were overcharging for games and people kept buying them. And so, I mean, I guess maybe they weren't overcharging because honestly, the market is what sets the price. And if we're willing to spend the money on those games, then obviously uh, they're not overpriced. But I think they are. And that's not in the sense that I think that uh game like great games devalue you know i'm one of those people that say yeah i'm okay with nintendo still charging me 60 dollars for a game from three years ago because that game is just as great today as it was back then but let's let's admit something mario bros this mario bros arcade game was awesome back in the 80s by 2017 standards it's not that good of a game anymore uh, you mostly are going to buy it because you're curious where mario bros started and you're going to buy it because you uh you know, just want to have some nostalgia factor to maybe when you played it when you were a kid. Uh, it's not something uh, that's that's inherently a, a, a good game anymore. It, it's just okay at best. But back in the 80s, it was revolutionary. So, yeah, it's just one of those concepts to me that Nintendo needs to kind of get their head out of their butts and realize, uh, you know, they, they've been doing a good job of listening to consumers, I guess, with Switch up to this point. I would like them to continue to listen so we can end up with a better game. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed this conversation. Let me know what you think about Virtual Console and how Nintendo should handle it, how they are currently handling it. Uh, maybe you think I'm overreacting because, hey, their online system hasn't launched yet. And maybe they'll do something next year, and I hope they do. I want Virtual Console. So when I say my hot take is that there won't be Virtual Console, I'm not doing that because I don't want it. I want Virtual Console. But we don't have it. Uh, I don't know when we will get it. But I hope you enjoyed uh, this conversation. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Hopefully you enjoyed watching this old school arcade game. Do yourself a favor. Save money. Don't buy this game. Don't support. Um, I even, you know, even though I bought it literally for the purpose of this video, a video I'm not even going to make that 8 bucks back on. I just don't do it. It's not worth it. Don't support Nintendo overpricing games like this. Um, but, yeah. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below. If you like this video, you know what to do. And if you dislike the video, hit that dislike button. Subscribe for more videos just like this one. And as always, folks, I will catch you in the next one.